Hi, in today's video, we are going to study transition in D3. So, the process of animation in D3 is basically performed with the help of transition. Transition that are made over the dome selected element is performed using transition method. So, basically, we write selection period transition method. Now, selection dot transition method is used to schedule or to perform a new transition over a selected element. Second method is transition dot duration method specifies the period or time period of animation duration in millisecond for each element of selection. Transition dot delay will find or will help us to identify to specify the time in millisecond with for which transition must be get delayed. So after selection dot transition, whatever the delay period is, transition will wait for that delay period and after that transition will apply the animation for the specified duration. The life of transition. Transition that is happening over a time rather than instantaneously. So transition is as actually a function of time. It is not an event. It is actually having four phases in its life cycle. First phase is when transition is scheduled. Second phase is when transition starts. Third phase is when transition runs. And at fourth phase, transition ends. When transition is scheduled is when we call selection dot transition method. So whenever we write any selection followed by transition method, a new transition is scheduled. Transition start. New transition is getting started based upon its delay. If delay is not specified, transition is started instantaneously after it is scheduled. If there is a delay specified, then Transition will wait for some period or specified period of time. Third phase is when transition run. So while transition is running, in addition to delay and its duration, we also ease the control of timing. Say for example, we can have ease which is linear or which is actually controlling the motion of transition. The linear motion of transition, then we have sine motion of transition, we have bounce, we have spring, all these are nothing but methods of transition. Last is when transition ends. So based on the sum of delay time plus its duration of transition time is nothing but a time where transition ends. Once one transition ends, we can schedule another transition over it. Now, over a transition, what basically actions we can perform over an element or dome element? Let us see an example, a simple example of transition. See, this is my HTML file, transition example.html, and within the body, we have one h3 that is a header 3 tag which is containing a simple transition as a text. Now, in a script part, I select h3. Now, over h3, I wish to have, okay, simply this much code will resemble web page. Let us look into web page. What is an output of this? So, output of web page is this. And I need to have some animation over this text. So, I will first select my h3 tag and over which I am going to apply one transition. So transition method is called to this selection. Now what I wish to have is to this text into red color. So I'll apply style method. Style method is used for having color. So I simply write down color and its value that is red. 
So transition is applied over H3 tag, but what transition I am expecting? I am wishing to change its color. Now this transition, let me save this document. Okay, here I made a transition by mistake. Let me save this document and as you can see, now my text color is red. But here, let me show you an element page. Yeah. Okay, but you are not able to notice that transition. It is just because we haven't provided its time duration. Let us provide transition duration. So, duration of transition must get specified within bracket in a millisecond. Say, so I wish to have this transition for three seconds. So, text which is changing its color from its original to red color within three seconds. So, it is kind of animation. I'll refresh. Now, as you can see, the text is changing its color with some period. That is a period of 3 seconds. I'll again refresh. As you can see, it is changing its color from black to red after some time or within a period of 3 seconds. Let me add one more transition. So, before it gets changed in its color, I need to have one more transition. Say transition is, I set its duration as uh, 5 seconds. And uh, the transition basically I wish to have is changing its font style. So I wish here to change its font size. So whatever size it's currently having. I need to change it to say 30 pixel. So getting large up to 30 pixel will take total 5 seconds to complete it and within 3 seconds it is going to change its color to red. I may also combine these two transitions within one. So instead of specifying two different styles in separate separate transition I may would like to have these both transition in a single time. So within 5 seconds, it must get resized up to 30 pixels as well as its color could must go change into red. So that is also possible. As you can see, the time it is getting bigger is also changing its color by mean time. I'll refresh once more so you can notice the change. Yes. So color as well as size both are going to get changed in a single transition. It is completely up to you whether you want series of transition or you would require to have different, different changes within only one transition or not. Another attribute that I can change within transition is the delay. Say so delay of uh, 2 seconds. So before the transition starts to make your text from smaller to larger, it will wait for 2000 milliseconds. That means basically it is going to wait for 2 seconds. And after that 2 seconds, within 5 seconds, it is going to apply new styles. Let us see. I refresh the page 1 and 2. Now after 2 seconds, the transition starts which is enlarging your text as well as changing its color simultaneously within one transition. Now after this, let me do this, v3.select. Body and I wish to change its background color. So I first say v3.style and background color. Initially it is yellow. Now I wish to add one transition. So transition will wait for delay of one second. And the duration of transition is say 3 seconds and here in transition I wish to change background color to some new color so I specify new background color value say for example blue 
Okay, so background color is going to change from yellow to blue within a span of 3000 seconds. But before it gets animated, it will wait for one second. Save this. Now, as you can see, now we have two different transitions over two different elements. One transition is applied over body and second transition is applied over text. So let me show you one more interesting transition. As you can see, circle is changing its direction as well as its color and it is uh, changing in a path of square. Again, let us just observe it. Initially it is black, change the color red and move towards the right. Change color green, move towards the down. Change color to blue and move towards the left. Again, change color to yellow and came back to its original location. So how we have done that? Let us look at the code. So here within the script, we have created, we have selected body. We have appended one SVG tag of height and width of 500 by 500 pixel. And within this selection, we are, this is my canvas selection over here. And we have appended one circle, okay. And this circle is having radius of 25 and its center is at 50, 50. And stored this complete selection at circle 1. Now, whatever the transition that we are applying is applying on the circle 1. The first transition that we wish to apply is of duration 2 seconds after a delay of 1 second. If you do not specify delay, your transition starts as soon as your circle is drawn over the web page. That's why only delay of 1 second is applied and uh, the transition's duration is for 2 seconds. So on start, that means as soon as transition starts, what do we do? We select this particular element itself and change its fill color to red. So basically this is referring to circle 1 variable itself. So whatever there inside circle 1 variable is considering this at this time. So d3.selectthis.attr fill is changed to red. This transition that means we have changed the color at its location. So as soon as transition starts its color is first changed to red. And the transition that we wish to apply is to change its x coordinate. That means center x is shifted to new location 300 pixels. Previously center x was at 50, now it is at 300. So my circle will move from say this location to 300 to 50 pixels towards the right. Now again we apply new transition. Now in this transition is having a duration of 2000. As you know, there is no delay, that's why it is not taking any time to stop at this location or at 300. Now, as soon as we apply new transition, we specify its duration of 2 seconds. And as soon as the transition begins, that means on start of this transition, whatever the function, this function will get executed. Now, this is an anonymous function, a function which will get executed at the time of declaration. So these kind of anonymous functions do not need to get called. They will get executed at a place of declaration. So this anonymous function will get executed at a time of start. What do we do, with, do inside this function? We basically select this element. This element again refers to the circle 1 element. Whatever the circle element and wherever it is currently at page, at that time its fill color is going to get changed into green. So now circle's color is changed to green and the transition that we wish to have to change its Y coordinate. So center Y of circle is now at 300. Previously center Y was at 50, now center Y is at 300 pixel location. Now new transition is started, again it is of 2 second, it comma 50 pixel. So on a start of transition, there is an anonymous function. Now this anonymous function will get called at its place only, we need not to call it explicitly. So here we write v 3 select this statement, this element itself and changing its filling attribute to blue color. 
Now again we change its x coordinate or center of circle at 50. Now remember previous location or previous center of circle is now currently at 300 which is now changed to 250. And similar way for the transition is for changing its color to yellow and its y coordinate is now changed to 50 which for previously 300. So this is the complete code of uh, and of course at uh, the end of transition, uh, the end of last transition that's why we write on end we have one more anonymous function which is selecting this element and changing its fill attribute back to black in color. And uh, we are not changing its position because lastly it is having center at x50 and center at y is also at 50. So basically this is how we have created this moving ball example transition. You all know how to draw bar chart using data binding. So we will have different different bars of different different sizes as per the data. We have already seen this. But with an animation, if I wish to have bar chart, let me show you how it basically works. So this is how bar chart with animation looks like. They are going to get progressed as for their width in some transition way or in some animation way. So basically how it is done, you will know how to make this bar chart with data example. So let me show you this code. This is my file where SVG is of height 500 by 500 and my data contains 5 elements. Within an SVG we select all rectangle and we bind this rectangles with this rect data. So my data is going to get binded with rect method. Now you know that there are no rectangles within an SVG. That's why we make use of enter method and we append new rectangles. So enter method will identify how many elements are required and that many tag will get appended. And each of this rectangle will have red in color, they will, hide, they will have a height of 50. The starting location x coordinate is 10 pixel whereas y location is a function of data. As per the index, if data is first, it will have lesser y value, if data is second, it's will have next y value and so on. So it is a function of index. Some values are getting added and for spacing. And uh, after this complete uh, rectangle, all attributes are set. Only the attribute that is left is width. Now before we I change the width, which is function of data, where I return simply data into 10, I apply one transition. So transition is going to get applied over only width, not to the height, not to the x, y coordinate and not to the color. So here transition, new transition of 4 seconds is applied to width attribute. So whatever the width of rectangle is, is going to set across 4 seconds. So that's why we are having this kind of animation in our bar chart. That is all for today. Thank you everyone for watching this video. This is Munira Topia signing out.